Welcome back. It's still the breakfast. And Plus TV Africa set for our first major conversation this morning. Um, of course, you know Nigerians are heading to the polls this Saturday. Yes, uh, it will be a fiercely contested presidential vote. This is the most keenly contested in the history of the country. Analysts have said that uh, it is too close to call. Now, it will be the largest democratic exercise on the continent because Nigeria, of course, as Africa's most populous nation will be picking a new president. The crucial election comes as the country battles a, a myriad of economic and security problems that range from fuel uh, and cash shortages to rising terror attacks, high inflation, and a plummeting you know, local currency, a local currency, the Naira. Uh, and the question remains, how ready is Africa's biggest country uh, for this exercise? Joining us to uh, discuss the issues surrounding the forthcoming election is Shegun Shopikton, who is a political analyst. Good morning to you, Shegun, and thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me. Good morning, Kofi. Good morning, viewers. All right. It's a pleasure to be here. Looking at all the, the factors, you know, and all the indices, as far as you're concerned, is Nigeria ready for the elections? Um, on the face of it, you know, and if you listen to the various stakeholders, you, you could say that we're ready. Um, listening to INEC talk, you know, INEC has been very categorical about the assurances that they're ready for the elections. Um, yesterday, the, one of the uh, public relations officials of INEC had uh, said that movement of non-sensitive areas will commence today. You know, so, I mean, once the, the machinery, the logistic machinery of INEC has been, you know, kicked into, into, into operations as, as we speak now. So INEC says they're ready. Um, the security services have been mobilizing, um, including the military, uh, obviously because of the, uh, the history of Nigerian elections and the tendency for violence. You know, it's, been, it's become necessary in recent elections to involve the military. It's not really desirable, but you know, it's a reality. The military has started mobilizing, I'm aware of that. Uh, the police are also making their usual arrangement to be ready for the elections. Uh, the, the, the politicians, uh, the political parties are rounding up their campaigns. Um, so, uh, of course, you know, Nigerian electorates are also very obviously um, energetic, eager, and ready to go. Um, so the only concern that one might want to express is with regards to the currency redesign policy of the central bank and the, the, the chaos um, and the confusion that uh, we are currently witnessing in the country with regards to that. No cash anywhere, tampering uh, small value transactions and knowing fully well that uh, Nigeria runs um, a very significant informal economy, um, knowing fully well that that informal economy will have an impact in some way on the elections. You know, So uh, even INEC has said the lack of availability of cash could affect them, but I want to believe that them being um, a government agency, they would have to find a way to gain access to the cash that they may need uh, to run the election. So aside from the cash problem, you know, perhaps I, I would say that all in all, Nigeria appears to be ready and we can only just wait for the last few days. It's two days to the election, so uh, we're good to go as far as one can see. All right. Um, uh, let's, let's go to that cash uh, crunch, as, as uh, some have called it. Um, uh, you've talked about INEC and uh, the necessity of cash uh, uh, for INEC to effectively carry out its responsibility of organizing the polls. Um, uh, so let's talk about how this, this, this cash crunch will affect uh, the general elections. Of course, you look at INEC, we look at the political parties, look at the candidates. We're told that uh, they are allowed by law. I think it was uh, Dogowa um, who said at Asurok that he needs 70 million naira uh, to prosecute the election in hard copy, he said. So they are also affected. Then the people. Um, how do you think this cash crunch will affect the elections? Some Nigerians have been supporting it because they say to um, limit vote buying. Some politicians have said they, are, them, they can't pay, that's nothing affects them. They are ready for the election. They have the money they need to prosecute the elections and all that. 
So let's look at all, all, all the factors, all the, um, the players. How would the cash crunch affect uh, the elections? I think today they've said um, on the front pages of the papers that they have access to cash through the CBN. Government is going to give them cash and that the, um, the various state resident electoral commissioners will be collecting cash, new Naira notes, hard, hard currency, or hard copy rather, uh, from the state CBN um, uh, offices. So how do you think this will all affect the elections? Well, um, INEC, you know, like, like I said, and you've confirmed, um, INEC should have access to cash if they need it. But I think one should also use this opportunity to perhaps encourage INEC to embrace technology. You know, I, I, you just have to wonder why they need cash. Um, the only thing that one can think of is perhaps um, the payments that they will need to make to their logistic partners, bearing in mind that um, the, the partnerships that they have with uh, uh, private uh, transport, transport, uh, let's say bus owners, transport owners, um, uh, are they're not they're not um, aggregated under one umbrella, so they're dealing with you know, individual bus owners, bus drivers, and all of that. It's, it, it's very inefficient. Um, and I think that INEC really, really needs to look into this um, and embrace technology, find a way to use technology to aggregate these services and administer every aspect of that chain, including payments, such that they do not have to rely on cash. Because once you take that out, you know, what else would INEC need cash for? You know, payment of their ad hoc staff, maybe. Again, why why would they need cash to, to do this? Why would they not insist that people provide accounts so they can do transfers, you know? Uh, and, and, you know, you can go across their entire uh, logistic operations and look at the different components and wonder why they would need cash to prosecute any one of those things. But they say they do need cash, and fortunately, um, the CBN will, will be providing cash for them. For, for the politicians, uh, some of them would like us to think that the cash crunch or the cash scarcity is not going to affect them, but their actions um, tell us otherwise. The fact that um, as many as 10 of them have gone to the Supreme Court to compel, to force the CBN to continue to uh, recognize the old Naira notes as legal tender already says enough. It means that they have those old Naira notes that they want to spend during the elections and for the purpose of the elections. Maybe not only for vote buying, maybe also for payment of their party agents and what have you. You know, and again, one would wonder why do you need cash? You know, why can't you do transfers to your party agents, you know, polling unit agents and any other official that you need to make payments to? during the elections. And if it's for vote buying, use transfers to, to, to buy the votes so that the police can track you, so the police can uh, track you down um, effectively, <laughs> you know. So um, uh, aside from INEC and the politicians, then there is the ordinary Nigerian. And fortunately, there, there, there won't be any movement on, on that day. So the only thing that you can think of that how uh, this might affect um, the electorate is them preparing themselves for the election day, Saturday. Uh, of course, when you are going to the polling unit, you are going to spend the entire day there. You need to go arm yourself with water, with food, and with some basic provisions, maybe some medicine for people that are managing uh, health issues and lifestyle issues. Um, you know, so for such people, they may need cash to, to prepare themselves. And you know, the, the non-availability of cash may affect them to some degree. But fortunately, we've still got a few days to go. So they, if they plan, they, they should be able to find their way around it. So the cash situation will have some impact on, on, on elections and on preparation for the elections. But it shouldn't be such that it will be disruptive in nature. It will be more of an inconvenience to people rather than a complete and entire disruption of the process. Very interesting indeed. Um, uh, do you expect vote buying to be as rife as it's been in, in recent elections because of this uh, cash crunch of the INEC policy, uh, the CBN policy? I am pretty certain that, that we will see a, a reduction. I'm pretty sure of it. Um, the, and the evidence, again, is there for us to see. The fact that um, the politicians, you know, in fact, the All Progressive Congress 
who is the party that formed the current government, has taken themselves to court. You know, it's the All Progressive Congress, governors, and the party has taken the All Progressive Congress government to court over this cash policy. That is enough to tell us that it's going to affect cash, you know, the vote buying. Um, I think we need to realize and recognize that usually politicians, you know, uh, they are very, very um, methodical when it comes to elections. They start planning for the next election right after the completion of the last one. So this, this a lot of our politicians, and I, I'm talking about government officials, I'm not talking of party officials, governors, um, members of the House of Reps, members of the, you know, the various houses, elected officials have been stockpiling cash towards elections. And the cash that they've stockpiled are old notes. And that is the only reason, I make bold to say this, and you know, it's very important for Nigerians to understand this, the only reason that we're seeing this uh, level of um, opposition and resistance from political actors towards this currency redesign policy is because they know that it's going to wipe out their stash of cash. It makes it on, you know, um, uh, non-legal tender, you know, so it definitely will affect them. So we should see a reduction. Now, let's not forget that also one of the reasons that there is the scarcity of the new notes is that the new notes that are being released, that have been released by the central bank through the commercial banks, are being intercepted by politicians. And that's what created the scarcity. That's why you don't have the new notes in, in ATM machines. Um, so because of that, we will still see vote buying. We'll still see politicians, you know, handing out the new notes, but it will not be enough to um, prosecute their agenda um, adequately, you know. And I think that's why I feel that the incidence of vote buying will be reduced to a, uh, I think we can say to a significant degree uh, for these elections. Uh, quite interesting uh, times to live in. Let's look at the uh, security aspect of everything, which is uh, quite uh, of interest to you, uh, following a conversation of the air. Um, how do you think the security situation in the country will play out? It's been a bit quiet on the northern side um, in recent weeks. Um, our security forces have made some, uh, you know, some advancement, some progress uh, in the fight against terrorism, uh, but it's been still quite um, volatile in the southeast. Um, and of course, the conflicting, you know, uh, orders of sit at home and all that, coming from IPOB and and, and other groups. Uh, how do you think the security situation will affect, you know, the turnout of people on Saturday, voters on Saturday? Well, um, yes, the the security situation is it presents a bit of um, a conundrum for for Nigeria as a country and for these elections for the reasons that you've identified. I think the first thing we need to uh, perhaps um, recognize is that the, the preparedness of our security forces, uh, ranging from the police to the civil defense corps to the military, um, even, even paramilitary services like the road safety will be deployed very heavily during the elections. Um, the DSS would also be very much active. Um, so we, we, we are adequately, um, I would say, significant enough, adequately um, resourced as far as personnel is concerned uh, for these elections. Um, another point to note, um, just like you've kind of alluded to, uh, you have to wonder why um, there's been so much quiet um, up north with regards to banditry and kidnapping in the last three months. We really need to wonder. We really need to ask ourselves, you know, what has been happening. Of course, kidnappings are still happening, but it's nowhere near on the scale that we witnessed in the last. If you if you just um, cast your mind back a year, for example, or maybe even eight nine months ago, you know, um, things didn't look so good. Uh, but all of a sudden, there's peace and quiet. You don't get too many reports of kidnapping cases and banditry, uh, even herdsmen and uh, farmers clashes so-called, um, have reduced. And this is a constant um, uh, 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 tendency in our various election cycles. Um, so there's that on the one corner. Uh, but it's a good thing, at least for now, you know, uh, people in those communities that are normally affected by these things can go out and they can vote, uh, knowing that for now they're secure. In the, in the Southeast, 
Um, it's very, very unfortunate what's happening there. And I say this because there is quite obviously a possibility that um, some people uh, will be discouraged from going out for fear or uh, for their safety and for their lives. But the military has also been very emphatic and very categorical in saying that they are going to be on ground and they're going to make sure that everybody is safe and the people should come out without fear to exercise uh, their franchise. Um, unfortunately, I, I would say that leaders in the Southeast perhaps have um, have handled the security situation with kids' gloves in the in 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 in, in recent years and had, had not spoken out very clearly to deal with those um, um, elements that have been creating this this um, security uh, problems in that area. And now it's coming out to bite them. Now one of their own sons <laughs> is a major contender for the first time in the history of Nigeria. Um, uh, we have, or at least since uh, the First Republic, we have a person from that axis being a major contender with a real chance to win. His base and the source of his victory ordinarily ought to be the Southeast and the South-South. And if you then have a situation where people in the Southeast are unable to vote freely, then you wonder how that is going to affect his chances. You know, so, but fortunately for them, <laughs> if I may say, you know, the military has said that they're going to do what all they can uh, to 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 ensure that people can come out to vote, and one can only hope that that happens so that Nigeria can enjoy an election that produces the the, the a winner that clearly is the will of the majority of Nigerians. Interesting. Apart from uh, the the effect on voters, INEC itself has been a a victim of uh, attacks, you know, by unknown persons. So, what use that word? Um, you know, we've seen INEC offices in different parts of the country being burnt. We've seen uh, INEC uh, offices being attacked. You know, uh, PVC scattered away, or the offices destroyed. Um, do you think INEC may find it difficult to send their personnel at the end of the day when push comes to shove on that day to some part of the country where they've experienced attacks on? Uh, their personal. We know what they are saying they're ready for the election, you know, even though Anayana official said last time that uh, it, it might be an issue, but they're saying they're ready officially. But um, if you want to look at these attacks on some INEC offices in parts of the country, shouldn't this be uh, a cause of concern? And shouldn't, wouldn't this lead to INEC saying, you know what, at the last minute, we're going to hold on uh, from sending our staff to these areas? Well, INEC has um, done their own internal review of the various polling units across the country, 176,000 plus of them. And they've come out to say, out of that 176,000, as a result of potential security concerns, 240 of those uh, polling units will not have voters. And will, there will be no voting in those places. Um, so it, it, that would suggest that they have looked at this. And we, you will recall that uh, a predominant number out of that 240 falls within the Southeast region. Uh, so they've looked at the hottest uh, hot spots um, in terms of security, and they've, they've decided that those places, they can't risk uh, putting their personnel in those places, and therefore elections will not hold there. Uh, outside of those ones, um, I think elections will go ahead. I think that what you will see, I expect that what you will see is that the um, INEC will work more closely in those places that are high-risk uh, places with the military in particular and maybe with the police as well, to compensate for the potential risk of um, attacks by ensuring that there is adequate presence of well-resourced and well-equipped um, security forces to ensure that people are safe when, when they go out to those places. So I don't think that we're going to see um, a situation where INEC would not show up in certain places. You know, let's not forget that, look, the Nigerian state, um, is a very, very strong and well-resourced um, um, entity. And when the force, the power, the might of the Nigerian state is deployed against a certain uh, or towards a certain cause, it's very difficult to resist them. Um, so, you know, I think that the people that are saying the things that are saying in the East will be very, very well advised uh, to, 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 to watch their backs because I'm pretty certain that uh, the Nigerian security forces will do what needs to be done to ensure that people are safe. Um, I, I don't know. I don't think there's much more that one can say beyond that. Uh, aside from that, I would like to 
perhaps just use maybe this opportunity to admonish leaders, the leadership, the opinion uh, uh, leaders in the Southeast to be more categorical and clearer in their opposition to the activities of IPOB, of ESN, and all other such separatist tendencies in those places. Um, you know, this what is happening now for the elections should be a lesson for them. Um, in the future, they should speak out. You know, this thing called unknown government is such a strange thing for me. When, uh, when we had um, marauders um, attacking people and kidnapping people from forests, we were very united as a country in calling them Fulani, Kila Fulani Herdsmen. We even put a tribe to the name. All of a sudden, you have people um, attacking people in the southeast. We've seen videos. You can see that they're speaking evil. And then you still say there are no government. What, what does that mean? If you don't name a thing adequately and name a problem properly, then how do you solve it? You know, so it, it's so ironic that this is now becoming a problem for them. I think that should be a lesson. Uh, but, but all in all, I'm pretty certain that um, elections will hold in those places um, properly. All right. Look at one aspect of uh, this security situation in um, in uh, during the elections that we normally would see is the redeployment of, uh, you know, police um, uh, 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 chiefs and CPs. And one of the ones I think uh, uh, we can talk about is, is in River State, where um, we hear that the IGP has redeployed uh, some of the uh, police officers there, especially um, the CPs also as well in other parts of the state. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on this situation, the fact that from time to time we see that uh, uh, police chiefs are redeployed? Is... Does this have any effect on, on, on the outcome of the election? Why are they redeployed? For instance, uh, in the papers today, we hear ahead of the general election, the AIG of uh, police as AIG in charge of Zone 13, Oka, Anambra State, uh, Abutiaro, has been drafted to River State, um, also deployed to River State. This is apart from the AIG, AIG Zone 13. Uh, uh, also deployed to River State for election duties are four commissions of police who are to be supervised by Yaru. Um, then the incumbent CP, Okonefiong, was redeployed to Enugu State. This is what we hear. And this is the same Okonefiong that uh, some opposition parties in River State, including the APC and SDP, had said that was um, uh, in bed with the state governor, you know, as far as attacks on those uh, opposition parties were concerned. Um, so so wh why do we see these, you know, movements and, you know, rearrangement, realignment, redeployment, of uh, scary operatives. I mean, River State, this is quite uh, a huge, you know, and a whole AIG is going to the state and they're sending, apart from the AIG, uh, four CPs to work under him for just River State and they've sent the CP there out. You know, um, Kofi, it's, um, it's an indictment. I, I think the police must admit, they must raise their hands, they must hands up and say that something is not working. Um, in the system, if you have to every single election cycle, whether it's the general elections or an off cycle election, you always find that the police finds it necessary to rearrange and redeploy and move people and reassign people all over the place. And that only says one thing that the police command itself is worried about the um, independence and non partisanship of its officials. It means that they are alluding um, that this high-ranking officials may have formed alliances uh, with political actors in those locations, and, and uh, they feel the need, perhaps based on petitions, perhaps based on reports um, from the field, perhaps even based in some instances on requests from the uh, political leadership in those places, um, that uh, those high-ranking officials have been compromised by some political actor from whichever side of the divide, you know, that compromise might be coming. Um, and this obviously should not be the case. The police, we recognize that they're human beings and they have their political preferences, but by training, they are supposed to be um, friend to all and foe to none except lawbreakers. Um, a situation where you have to redeploy your officers, high-ranking officials for that matter, um, suggests that you have no confidence in their independence um, and in their non-partisanship. And again, you know, that also speaks to 
you know the 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 reality confronting us that the current structure of the police in Nigeria of policing in Nigeria needs to be taken a, a very comprehensive um, needs needs to needs to go under very comprehensive review uh, as it stands now a situation where you have people from other locations in the country policing um, in places where they're strangers. Perhaps it's something that we really need to we really need to look into because if if these police officer, of officials are locals, if they live in the community and they have their brothers and their sisters in the community, you know they will be better behaved. Okay. They will know that there will be consequences, including naming and shaming types of consequences. Yeah, uh, Shego, the, Shego, the, yes. The, the, Sorry to interject because I've been prompted that we will have to go. There's a lot to talk about as far as elections are concerned. But just qu a quick one. Election, electoral violence or election-related violence is a big problem, you know, as far as elections in this country are concerned. And most times it's, uh, uh, the, the accusing finger is pointed at politicians and the thugs that work for them, you know. Um, the Nigerian Civil Society Situation Room, after the 2019 election, released a report saying an estimated 626 persons were killed across Nigeria in the six months between the start of co election campaigns and the commencement of the general and also supplementary elections. Um, 626, that's a lot, you know. So uh, do you think 2020, 2023 will be different as far as election violence or election-related violence is concerned, in the, especially with the use of thugs by politicians? It will be different. And the reason I say that is because technology has been deployed to a greater degree by any, and the politicians understand the implication of each one of those technological elements. So um, by the time you combine the PIVAS with IREV, with trans electronic transmission of results, um, you find that the situation is such that it's almost getting to the point where it's pointless uh, to do those things. Anywhere that you go and um, for men's trouble or great violence, there's every chance that you will also suffer for it because there's a tendency and a potential. First, that those things you've done can be proven in court, but also that INEC now, by virtue of Electoral Act 2022, has the power to cancel elections in those places. In fact, it doesn't even have to get to the uh, national office of INEC. The returning officer for, for each of those locations can cancel elections, for example, where there's overvoting. And overvoting is very easy to prove now. You know, so um, uh, I, I think we'll see uh, much less incidences. So, in fact, we have seen, you know, because like you said, look, the election is just two days a, a, away. In previous elections, long before the election day itself, you would have been seeing violence. And we've seen some, no doubt, there's been attacks from different camps or on different camps, but it's nowhere as bad as what we've had in the past. And I think it will be better with these elections, certainly. All right. Uh, there's a lot to talk about as far as elections are concerned. Um, before you go, what's your prediction? Uh, are you seeing um, uh, maybe a runoff uh, election, a second round of voting, a stalemate? Uh, or you okay. think it'll just be, uh, you know, first time lucky, in one shot and everybody, uh, the winner emerges? And who do you think will win? I suspect that we're going to have a very shocking result, and I suspect that we will not have a runoff. I think that all the, you know, the calculations and the projections have been suggesting that there might be a runoff because for the first time we have three very strong contenders. Uh, but I think based on the various factors, if you look at the various factors playing out, I suspect that we'll have a shocking result and there will be no runoff. Um, who who will be the of that shock remains to be seen. <laughs> All right, you've said it. I think like Paul Adifarasin, you're speaking in parables. Um, <laughs> let's see, let's see how, how that plays out. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me. All right, uh, we'll talk some more about the elections. As we said, um, Plus TV Africa is your television station of choice uh, for round-the-clock, up-to-the-minute coverage of Nigeria's elections on Saturday. When we return, we'll look at the Nigerian um, oil industry, of course, uh, with production uh, said to be increasing. The NNPC Limited has said uh, they're doing everything possible to end oil theft. How possible is that? We'll discuss it when we return.